I was the new guy. Um, I had been doing a show for Wally Burr, uh, who, for those of you who don't know, was uh, the director of the Transformers, but also the director of G.I. Joe, who I was fortunate enough to be doing that show for him at about the same time. I can't tell you which came first, but it seems like it was G.I. Joe by a nose. Uh, yeah, the Transformers. Yeah, but not, for me, not so... M they both arrived at about the same time. Um, and actually, I thought it was kind of always going to be like that. It, things were so busy in those days, animation-wise, that we basically, the actors who were fortunate enough to be a part of both shows, needed air traffic controllers to, to tell us where we were supposed to be at any given hour of the day. We, it was wake up and start doing sessions and just continue going from studio to studio to studio to studio, like what I imagine New York was like for radio actors in the 40s. It was just phenomenal uh, to be a part of, of that period of television animation. I'm a stage actor and I was doing, this is actually how it happened. Um, Wally had, had me, had basically my own voice in those days, and I was in my, in my 20s, and he, he had heard me, uh, and uh, I was doing a character called Frank Little on The Littles, um, and he thought I had a fairly limited range, but he liked my young voice as, my, as myself. He saw me in a play uh, called Cloud Nine in Los Angeles, and I was jumping in and out of characters. It was, and I had gone into that play, and I'm not, not going to make the, this is a long elevator ride. <laughs> but, it, but, but it's kind of a complicated... Nobody's any hurry here. It, it's kind of a complicated how to, how I got here, how I met your mother's story. Um, he saw me in this play, which I went into, and this is kind of inspirational, as an understudy. And I took that play thinking, nobody's going to see me. This is going to do nothing for me career-wise, but I'm an actor, and I'm obliged to do this. I love the play, I want to do this play. And so I did it, thinking that it would have no benefit other than I would be allowed to do what I do. So he saw me, and on the same night, the elevator ride gets longer, a guy named Gordon Hunt, who was doing all the voice direction at Hanna-Barbera, saw me on the same night. It was actually a night as an understudy that changed my life. And I'll get into this later. Please remind me if I don't volunteer it myself. This night changed every day of the rest of my life, um, career-wise, every day of the rest of my life. But Wally saw me, and Wally, who thought I had a nice sort of kid, collegiate, kind of friendly dad voice, um, said, I had no idea you were as versatile as you were. I'm doing these shows, G.I. Joe and Transformers, and I'm going to keep you in mind for them as well. I had no idea. So by being on stage, I influenced somebody to think of me as being much more versatile than I was. He said, I'm even going to read you for this crazy, really versatile. He said, I'm going to test your limits. Uh, when I did the audition, for which I actually constricted my face, held my jaw and mandible and everything. I did everything. I, you know, thankfully in voiceover they can't see you. <laughs> so whatever you do or contort or restrict or hold or... or it, it was interesting to watch, okay? Like, yeah. <laughs> uh, there's probably some video footage somewhere that I don't want anyone to ever see. I also played a, uh, an Orkin Nagachamp named Bebo on Mork and Mindy, <laughs> which no one will ever... Well, maybe there's a video of that too. No one can see how you manufacture your voice, so uh, there's people that do very strange things to manufacture audio sounds. Um, but uh, I actually, he, Wally said, I don't know if this is good news or bad news for your tonsils, but you got the job. Uh, he said, are you sure you can sustain a character that's this vocally demanding? I said, well, I damn well better because... Uh, <laughs> You know, let's do the job. I, let's do this thing. I'll go to the gym and I'll I'm, I will make my voice as strong as it needs to be. But yes, you know, I'm an actor. This is what I do. Put put me in, coach. <laughs> give me you know, give me give me. I got the glove. You give me the ball. You're watching TFXO TV.